Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Engineer Liu here. We're back at solving fluid mechanics problems. So let's go. Well, in the last video, we solved problem one, which concerned the continuum, the limit of the continuum hypothesis. And on problem two, uh, we'll be estimating the number of molecules of air in the entire atmosphere of the Earth. Cool, right? So, let's read the problem. Table A.6 lists the density of the standard atmosphere as function of altitude. Use these values to estimate crudely, say within a factor of 2, the number of molecules of air on the entire atmosphere of the earth right so first of all let's take a look at table 8.6 so this is table 8.6 in the appendix a this doesn't help very much actually because uh, we'll be using a formula which approximates the density of the air as function of the height on the atmosphere so first things first we need to know as a preliminary the mass of one air molecule which we'll be evaluating by dividing the molecular weight of the air by the Avogadro number in this case, our molecular weight of the air is this value here, 28.9647 grams per mole. And we divide this by the Avogadro number. So we got the uh, mass of one air molecule, okay? We'll be using this in the final step of the problem to actually estimate the number of molecules in the entirety of Earth's atmosphere, okay? What the problem doesn't give to us is this function here, which is a good estimate of the air density as function of the height, okay? So it's... Uh, exponential function we, we have these two constants here rho zero which is the density of air the standard density of air and this parameter here b which is equal to this number here okay so you see that in order to we have dimensional consistency we have to have this unit here so this is the value at mid meter at minus one okay so meter cancels with meter here and this this term here is dimensionless and here we have kilograms per meter cubic all right so in order to obtain the total number of molecules on the Earth atmosphere to estimate, of course, it will be a rough estimate. We will be calculating the mass of the entire of the Earth atmosphere. So the mass of the atmosphere will be this integral over here. We'll be integrating the density over the volume. Okay, so we have to obtain the differential of the volume. The volume will be given by the Earth's surface times the differential uh, dz, okay, because uh, we have our density is a function of only the height, so we don't have to be concerned about other parameters, okay. So the Earth's surface is given by the surface of a circle, which is 4 pi r squared, the radius of the Earth square. And according to Dr. Google, the radius of the Earth is 
around 6,000 kilometer, right? So, of course, we are supposing that Earth is a perfect square, which is not, right? Okay, so now we have all the tools to compute this mass, the mass of the Earth atmosphere. So, let's first obtain our differential here. So, this is our differential, and we're going to substitute this differential here on this equation and the density which is given by this expression here on this equation and integrate from 0 to infinity remember that the earth atmosphere has no upper limit well defined so that's why we'll be integrating from 0 to infinity so that's just Copy this expression here, substitute this here, and this guy over here. Okay, so now we have our integral, we have to define the limits of the integral. Like I said before, our limits will be from zero, from height zero, to infinity. And there we go, this is the integral we need to solve. Of course, the first step will be to move the constants out of the integral so we don't have to be concerned about them. Don't complicate yourselves. Okay, so this is a constant we move to here. Uh, this term here is also a constant. So it's moved here. And okay. So now we have to solve this integral over here. As you can see, this is an improper integral, so we have to we'll be dealing with some limits calculation, but no big deal. So let's compute this integral. When you do the substitution of this term here, minus b goes to the denominator of this expression. So let's compute this separately. Okay, so this is the result of our integral. And now we have to compute the definite integral. We solve the indefinite integral and now we have to compute the definite integral. Okay, so we have computed our first step of the definite integral. Here we have the limit when z goes to infinity as you can see when z goes to infinity this term gets larger and larger so this term goes to infinity so as this term here st stands on the denominator this fraction here uh, tends to zero so this is will be equal to zero right no bigger issues here and um, let's just copy this uh, again okay so this is here this is zero so we have minus and minus so sine so this goes to transforms into a plus sign and this multiplication here is equal to zero so it's just e to the power of zero which is one so this results in one over b okay so now we can substitute this value over here and we only have to compute uh, substitute the constants and we obtain the mass of the Earth atmosphere, right? We have substituted the value of the integral. So we have we need to have a dimensional consistency. So we have to transform this to meters. This will be equal to six three seven one to the power of 3 meter 
and or O zero, okay, and B, okay. So this is dimensionally consistent, and its parameters are all on the international system. So let's compute this term here. I have substituted the values here. You can see that it easily verified that this equation is dimensionally consistent. Here we have meters squared divided by m and divided again by m. So this is this meter multiplying meter squared. So we have cubic meter and divided by meter cubic. So we are left with kilogram. Right, so let's compute this value here. So our computation resulted on this value here, approximately 5.68 to the power of 10 to the power of 18 kilograms, right? And now, since we know the mass of all the atmosphere, we can estimate how many air molecules we have on the atmosphere. So remember, we calculated here as preliminary. So let's transform this to kilogram. So we only have to multiply this by 10 to the power of minus 3. We are left with this, OK? so. The number of molecules will be equal to the mass of the atmosphere divided by the mass of one molecule. So this calculation over here led to this result. We have around 10 to the power of 44 air molecules on the atmosphere. And according to Dr. Google, again, we have, of course, around uh, 10 to the power of 44 molecules. So here we have 1.04, and we our result is 1.18, so we are in a good estimates okay so this is it for today i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to like subscribe and comment leave your doubts as usual see you later bye